And WrestleMania 3 ends with real American blasting, a Hulk Hogan pose down, and Andre the Giant and Bobby Heenan stunned in their failure. One of the most important matches, not only in WrestleMania history, but WWE history itself. Up next, we jump ahead to WrestleMania 5 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Those with tickets didn't know it as they entered the venue that evening, but they were about to witness one of WrestleMania's biggest upsets take place right in front of their eyes. The Ultimate Warrior captured the WWE Intercontinental Championship at the inaugural SummerSlam in 1988 by blitzing the Honky Tonk Man, ending his record reign in a little over 30 seconds. Since then, he seemed unstoppable, a lock to become WWE Champion one day. Two people who were not impressed were ravishing Rick Rude and his manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan. The no. 1987 Slam Award away. winner for Best Body felt that Warrior was nothing special, both in-ring and even in terms of physique. This led to Rude challenging Warrior to a super pose down at the 1989 Royal Rumble, where the winner would be decided by the WWE Universe's approval. Pretty quickly, it was clear that the Ultimate Warrior was going to be crowned the people's choice, and Rude was livid. It launched a vicious attack, bringing the <laughs> a lot of them back there were doing that shit. That would lead to the signing of the contract for the two to compete in the Intercontinental Championship match at WrestleMania 5, and the world felt a Warrior would destroy his brash challenger. But Heenan and Rude were more than prepared for the champion. Heenan was desperate to have WWE gold in his vaunted Heenan family ranks, and he knew that the ravishing one was the right man for the job. They told anyone who'd listened that Rude was going to beat the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania, and now the time had come. Had they backed Warrior into a corner, or were they about to realize they'd bitten off far more than they could chew? That's a question only you can answer. Warrior wasted no time rushing at Rude the second he entered the ring. There would be no feeling out, no tentative lockups here. Warrior was here to make Rude pay for what he'd said, and especially what he'd done. And he was going to do that with some of the freakiest power ever displayed in WWE. The way he absolutely manhandled Rude was a sight to behold. No one had done this to Rude before. All the confidence had been drained from the faces of Rude and Bobby Heenan as Ultimate Warrior had steamrolled his challenger in the opening moments. Pass on and everything. Oh, wait, 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 I'm Rude! is just doing his own thing because he has no bar at the bottom or anything time we got Bobby the Brain on our side. Rude had struggled to this point, but his luck was going to change in an instant. Warrior hit the ropes three times before attempting his big splash, giving Rude just enough time to get his knees up and block the attack. 
Big time ring awareness shown by the Ravishing One to keep himself in the match. Rude needed to take advantage here because his opportunities for offense were few and far between. Did I do a carry move? Rip his face. in this. Rude looked to put Warrior away with the Rude Awakening. And then Warrior just powers out of it. Pushes Rude's arms away like they're nothing. No one had ever seen that done. All the momentum now with the Warrior. And he's looking to punish Rude a little bit more before ending the match. Rude looks completely out of it. And even Bobby Heenan looks flustered. Rude is trying to survive, trying to escape, but Warrior is relentless. Warriors throwing Rude all over the place when it happens. One last act of desperation from Bobby Heenan turns this match on its head. He trips Warrior and hangs onto his boots for dear life. Warrior can't kick out. Just like that, Heenan and Rude have stolen the Intercontinental Championship from the Ultimate Warrior in front of a completely stunned crowd. Rude smartly took his new championship and headed for the locker room. But Bobby Heenan, on the other hand, would not be so lucky, further incurring the wrath of an angry Ultimate Warrior. Why does that almost sound like the announcer in the
And while the now former Intercontinental Champion would chase the new title holder right out of the arena, nothing could diminish the huge upset that night at WrestleMania 5 with Ravishing Rick and Bobby the Brain pulling a fast one. And Arena left completely shocked as Ravishing Rick Rude pins the Ultimate Warrior to win the WWE Intercontinental Championship with a little assist from his manager, The Brain. Hey, if the ref doesn't see it, he can't call it. Those are the breaks. With the crowd buzzing from the monumental upset, it was time for WrestleMania V to deliver its main event. The macho man, Randy Savage, defending the WWE Championship against his former best friend and Mega Powers partner, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, the macho man, Randy Savage, dig it. He was one of a kind. He was intense, he was a great athlete, Everything about him was 100% perfect for sports entertainment and professional wrestling. While the split of the Mega Powers was made official on a February 1989 edition of the main event, the cracks had been obvious to many long before that fateful night. Hogan and Savage's friendship had been beneficial to both, which was never more evident than the year prior at WrestleMania IV. On this evening, the vacant WWE Championship was to be decided in a 16-man, one-night tournament. In an absolutely brilliant display of athleticism and heart, the Macho Man would compete in four different matches to claim the championship. But it was in the final against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase that Savage would run into seemingly more trouble than he could handle. In DiBiase's corner was Andre the Giant. Throughout the match, Andre interjected, bringing Savage's offense to a halt or distracting him for attacks by DiBiase. Eventually, Miss Elizabeth would run into the back, bringing Hogan out to restore some order and Hogan's presence led to Savage's win with a perfectly timed chair shot that the ref didn't catch. Like I said before, those are the breaks. The Mega Powers would be locked in a heated rivalry with Andre and DiBiase, now known as the Mega Bucks, that culminated with their victory at the very first SummerSlam. Around this time, though, it appeared Randy Savage was jealous of the closeness between Hogan and Elizabeth. Some on commentary would mention it, but many were quick to dismiss that there was any tension between the two. Things got worse at the 1989 Royal Rumble when Hogan eliminated Savage, some claim accidentally, which infuriated the Macho Man. Everything came to a head at the main event two on February 3rd, 1989. The Mega Powers would compete in tag team action looking to show the bond was still strong. After Miss Elizabeth was caught up in the action, Hogan would take her to the back for medical attention, leaving the Macho Man alone. Upon his return to the match, Hogan would extend a hand to tag in, but would instead be slapped in the face by an enraged Randy Savage. A post-match altercation in the locker room would make it official. The Mega Powers were dead, and a clash was inevitable. Soon after, Hogan would lay down the challenge for WrestleMania V. In a final twist, Miss Elizabeth would side with neither man, insisting that she'd be ringside in a neutral corner instead, offering to help either if they needed it. We were able to sit down with Hulk Hogan to talk about the night the mega powers explode. The lines were so blurry between reality and what we were trying to accomplish. He was madly in love with his wife, Elizabeth, for real. He was madly jealous for real. Leading up to it, you know, when she was managing him or managing me or couldn't depend on who she was going to manage, it made him crazy. I just didn't know what type of abuse I was in for, so it was a little nuts. He was there to go, and he pushed the gas pedal down really hard on me in that match. Once you became a Macho Man fan, that was the only thing you could think about. His look, just the way he carried himself, I had nothing but respect for him. It's always so great to hear from the legends themselves when it comes to these unforgettable WrestleMania moments and matches. Thanks again to Hulk Hogan for his time. Now, let's get you into the middle of an intensely heated WWE Championship match where the world would watch the Mega Powers explode. It's crazy to see how wrestling is, what it's, what we came from to what it is now.
don't perform a grapple. Hogan came into this match incensed, and the Macho Man looked to use that to his advantage early. With months of payback heading his way, Savage was evasive and defensive to the bull rush tactics of Hogan, appearing to frustrate the challenger. Hogan had a look in his eye that night. You could tell he wanted to hurt Savage. And Savage also wasn't shy of using Miss Elizabeth to his advantage, flagrantly bringing her into harm's way to stop Hogan in his tracks. Savage was playing by nobody's rules but his own. And if Hogan was going to get any revenge, he'd have to find a way to keep his own temper in check. Savage was showing early on that his approach would be as chaotic as possible. And now a once rampaging Hogan had slowed things down, looking to restore some order. The Macho Man's actions sent a clear message that anything goes and anyone would be fair game. Wake me up. That's what I did last last two years with the universe mode. Like I try to have a custom one with uh, MLW, but sadly last year after I got everything prepped and happy, not gonna happen this year. Hey, give me back in the ring, at least. I See action up in here, I see. Interesting, if that was Royal Rumble, he would have been eliminated.
They made sure for all the moves off of Irish, Irish ribs to connect this year. They're like, nah, you can really make it sure they connect. For the moment, managed to turn the tide with a well-placed boot. Now Savage wanted to slow things down, but this also gave him a chance to talk directly to Hogan. To remind Hogan of what he'd done to him at the main event. To rub in Hogan's face the fact that the Macho Man is the WWE Champion. That he knows Hogan is jealous of him and always has been. To look over at Miss Elizabeth and taunt her. Because Savage doesn't for one second believe that she's neutral at all. The Macho Man was getting some energy back while slowly sucking the life out of Hogan. Could the cheers of the Hulkamaniacs get him back to his feet? People nowadays will be losing their mind in a match like this. They'd be like, not enough flips, not enough broken glass, not enough blood. This is too slow. It's crazy, because you I bet you if you try to do like an 80 style match in today's time, it would not, it, it just wouldn't fly. That athleticism is through the roof nowadays. <laughs> Hogan would get back on the attack once he broke free. I knew I heard somebody. Why not go for the leg drop? Hogan's flash of offense is extinguished as quickly as it started, and Randy Savage seemed to have Hogan on the brink of exhaustion in their mega power collision. Because you know how most guys are, and they'd be like, eh. They might not even want to touch it. Three! They fixed that. I thought they fixed it. It doesn't happen as often, thank goodness. But I thought they fixed it. Patch update. Ooh, that's sad. Ooh, that's sad. Yeah, it is really sad. Over here, bringing out his inner Muhammad Ali. Come on! <laughs> Surprisingly, they did have a a, a patch. A day one patch. In one of the more surprising moments of this match, Miss Elizabeth proves herself true to her word. Get out the way! Stopping Hogan from running Savage into the ring post, maintaining her neutral status. The Macho Man would take advantage of Hogan's reluctance. Once again, Savage showed no regard for the safety of Liz.
fed up with her presence, Savage would insist to the referee that she be removed. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck and out of here. Back to the locker room. Having his constant get the bubbly on ice. Room, seemed to invigorate Savage. He was looking to put the finishing touches on what had been a master class to that point. Just moments right, away everywhere. from showing that it was Savage who was the true force of the Mega Powers, not Hogan. Looking to set up his vaunted flying elbow, Savage would target Hogan's throat. Hulkamaniacs knew to never lose hope, but it wasn't looking good for Hogan here. The Macho Man looked better than he ever had, seemingly on the verge of his biggest victory yet. <laughs> Damn, look at all that blood on Hogan's chest. Nope, we're not, we're not letting that happen. Out and out the ring, bro. <laughs> he teased it. from me ref get away from me ref get away from me I'm trying to stay out of your way come on macho man yeah he's giving you time Take him so long to get into the position. I thought he was gonna reverse it. stuff like that. One day I will is just yeah. I know Macho Man he was like kinda a high flyer so and I, I I don't know. Part of me wanna say set but 